we stay, of course, with sustainable, sustainable propulsion today, and um, we have now um, Philip Goethe, Director of Strategy and Product Management of Torquedo here. Um, please stay, he's very interesting. Um, enabling the transition towards sustainable propulsion. Philip, thank you for coming. Hello. And if you... Thank you. On the handle? Yes, I think the... Robert took it. Just a second. I think, yeah. Yeah, so first of all, hello from my side. Uh, thanks for having you here. And I will just spend a couple of seconds on the first slide. Because, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the topic of my presentation, enabling the transition towards sustainable propulsion. And we see our product range, uh, not all of our products, but uh, where Torquedo started with a travel, a one kilowatt uh, outboard, portable outboard. And our product range now goes to 100 kilowatt electric drives and then twin systems, uh, system power of 200 kilowatts. Um, as introduced, uh, I'm Philipp Goethe, I'm responsible for product management at Torquedo and I try to give you some insights where we are working on to enabling end customers and also boat builders and OEM partners uh, to electrify their, their products. So uh, what we started 17 years ago uh, was making portable electric outboards mainstream. This took a while and maybe it's not re uh, mainstream uh, right now, but what we really see is that the market for portable electric outboards uh, is now growing very fast and very quickly. There's a lot of advantages of electric outboards. You don't have the, the hassle with the fuel. It's uh, more lightweight than, than a petrol outboard. And yeah, we started with bags, accessories to really show this is just more convenient than having a petrol outboard. But since 70 years, the, the company grew, and now we're doing a lot of more things. So I just want to give you s some impressions of what Torquedo is doing at the moment. So I hope you got a good impression of uh, where electrification is already feasible and where, where and what kind of applications we are in. Um, today we are at Boat Düsseldorf, so I focus more on uh, boats that we can see here, the, that we provide here, and not so much on commercial or uh, unmanned vehicles. Um, and I want to start with, with one thing. So uh, there are a lot of constraints for electrification, and one, of course, is the weight that you have to carry with the battery. So in our uh, product range for the, for the small outboards, Torquedo's focus is really on lightweight solution and have a, a high power and energy density. So that's, the, that's necessary to bring smaller boats uh, into planing so that small, small boats like here, this fishing applications, really can uh, achieve certain speeds over 20 kilometers per hour that you would consider is as, as a good alternative to a, to a petrol outboard. So the, um, the solutions then uh, provide a very quiet experience. So I, I think if you have this, this picture in mind, a beautiful Bavarian lake in the morning, uh, there's nothing more natural than going uh, to, to fish in a very quiet um, way close to nature. In these applications, we often use, use tillers uh, on small boats. And the second application shows uh, another uh, type of our products, which is the, the pod engines. We saw it in the beginning. 
The pod engines has, uh, have some, some very big benefits that allow our boat builders to design totally new boat concepts. And uh, especially in, uh, in the category of day, day sailors, we see Safir as a very good example of making use uh, from the space that you don't need for a big combustion engine anymore. Uh, on top, you can integrate solar to power or power up your battery. So a lot of those boats are just used maybe once a week. So um, those boats will just purely charge um, with, with solar power. Um, as said, uh, we are using our fixed pod uh, engines here, uh, have a lot of space saving. And the opposite that many people would think is, is right. So we do not add weight to, to those day sailors, but we can save uh, between 30 to 50% in weight because we have those uh, high power and energy density batteries. And a, a system is around 50 kilo, uh, kilograms with a pot and, um, and one battery. We also see a similar uh, system here in Beneteau in the Oceanus uh, 30. Then another use case, also uh, very present here in this, uh, on the show, is, is Delphia. And they are, their brand uh, is claiming mindful cruising. I added mindful uh, canal cruising. And we will look a, a little bit more into it uh, because this is another limitation uh, that comes with electrification is the range. And we will have a, a little bit uh, deeper view into that. And here we provide a system with a Deep Blue 50 inboard um, and a holistic battery and, and power management system. As I said, we will uh, now focus a little bit more on how, what do we do to really enable uh, the boat builders to, to come up with good solutions. And today in the morning, it was that the most important things for the end customers at the end, the price. So what you could do with a diesel engine, oversizing is not uh, even uh, not, not possible anymore with electrification because if you put too much battery capacity in a boat, it will get too expensive if the customer doesn't really need it. So what we do uh, together also with the boat builders, with the OEMs, try to figure out what's the use case, uh, what's the needed battery capacity. And what was always key for Torquedo is to uh, have the GPS on board, also with our small outboards, to give the, the end customer a good feeling of range. So transparency is very important, because otherwise you just feel you have a, lay, uh, a range limitation, but in reality you, you maybe do not even have it. So cruising around uh, Makum, uh, where the, the Delphia was also launched, in which the natural uh, environment for such, a, for, such a, for such a canal cruising application, we see that this is a screenshot from my mobile um, at nine kilometers per hour, which is actually the speed limitations on the canals. Uh, we are cruising with around nine kilowatts. So that means with an 80 kilowatt hour battery, we have a range which is more than 70, 70 kilometers. Uh, waiting in front of locks, that are why I choose this picture, showed that at the end, the average speed we had was around six kilometers per hour, and the range was even higher uh, than those 70 kilometers. That means with a system like this, you don't really have um, range limitations in your, your use case of the boat. And the modular systems that, that we offer, um, as you see on the, on the right-hand side, is very modular. So we could adapt our charging power uh, depending on where the boat is located. Is, is, is it a small lake or do we have uh, higher shore power access so we can scale up the, the charging, the AC charging up to 22 kilowatt. And the only thing where uh, range limitations really uh, kick in is when you are maybe once or two, uh, two times per year, you want to go a bit further. You want to leave the canals. You want to go, uh, let's say, offshore to the islands. And there, of course, it doesn't make sense to scale the system uh, double or twice the, the battery capacity. But this is really where, where we and also Delphia, and they also have a speech here with Aqua Superpower, where DC charging would come into place because it doesn't make sense to add additional uh, battery capacity. Another good example is what we did with, with Access, also brand of a Beneteau group, uh, that we used the, the testing of the, the sail drives that we have to test a little bit more the behavior of customers and the use case 
of uh, hybrid sailing. So in the morning, we also learned with boats uh, larger than 10 meters, the house load is getting more, uh, more important and also the, the customers and the boat builders would consider hybrid propulsion systems as more relevant than, than pure electric. Um, uh, on the right side, you see how the system architecture of a deep blue hybrid system would, would work. Um, the central component in it is the system management unit, which is the, the small boxes. I don't know if the laser doesn't work. Uh, the, the gray box is on top, so this is where all components come together and where we have our smart system management uh, prioritizing different energy sources and providing always enough power to the drive unit, which is the, the most important component. And again, all the transparency for the end customer is there. He always knows which component uh, has which status. But very important for us was really to track the boat and see how the, the usage of the boat works like, because we don't have so much heat in there. So if you need hot water, you could uh, just need electricity for it. So what we really tried to figure out is what is the, the capacity we need on a boat like this. And this was then done on an XS15, but of course we could transfer all this, uh, this knowledge into, into other projects. So what came out is during sailing, it's important to have this transparency and switch off consumptions that is not needed. So there's no need to run the air condition inside if everyone is outside uh, uh, sailing. So uh, above sailing speeds uh, of seven knots, we see that the, um, all the energy consumed uh, on board and through the, uh, through the winches, for example, could be powered from hydro generation. Uh, the skipper confirmed he really liked the transparency and ease of use of the system because it's one supplier and uh, one system and you have everything integrated and not several screens that you have to get used to and feeling safe and comfortable, also the hybrid safety, uh, the hybrid uh, sailing was, was discovered. Like, really meaning in low wind speeds, where usually with a catamaran you would just uh, take down the sails and, uh, and motor to, to come your, to your destination. Being limited or also wanting to be close to nature and having this uh, electric sailing experience, with just a little bit backup of an electric engine, you could still sail and um, yeah, just hire the appearing wind speed and make use of, of your sails. So the, this range limitation you could really influence with a smart way of sailing. What we now saw is uh, some where, where we started with our low voltage systems and where we did a lot of investigations in our high voltage systems, uh, be it on canal cruising or in, in offshore sailing. Our, our really next step is transferring all this knowledge and understanding of how the system is used and uh, how the energy consumption on board really is working. And also the, the software developments that we did in uh, hydro generation and the algorithms that are behind the, the energy management, we want to transfer this to a new class of, uh, class of boats. And what we see, what's really important is the, the ease of use. So if boats are for charter, you don't want to read a 200-page manual uh, to understand what you have to do on the boat. Uh, and also the ease of integration for the, for the OEM. So what we did is we transferred all the capabilities of the high voltage system to the low voltage, so the 48 volt world. And we, we call it torque link communication system. And this is really what brings together all the components, be it solar, uh, shore power chargers, and, and the drive units. And then there's some minor things that might not be considered as a real product, but this really enables, and this is the, the, the topic of today, or to really make the integration easy and safe. So we have a gateway that could also uh, display our data through NMEA uh, 2K on the displays. Uh, we are further investigating to, to integrate more into MFDs, so multifunctional displays, and also all these uh, safety, uh, safety concerns when the generator kicks in, uh, is the is this just a system then allowed to, to run or not? We have uh, a lot of uh, kits that really make it plug and play for the boat builder to, to have all components available to design a safe electric 
system. And also we have a configurator that really makes it easy to say what kind of components do I need to electrify my boat as a private person or the, the boat range that I want to launch to the market as a boat builder. So the, the Talklink functions are uh, the, the software side, uh, but what we also did is in the last year to um, yeah, rework our cruise range. So we uh, repowered and redeveloped the, the cruise uh, system from 2, 4, and 10 kilowatt to 3, 6, and 12. And the result is not only that there's a bit more power, but we step into use cases where electrification was not able before. So the 30 uh, feet range of, of, of sailing, uh, for example, the Oceanus 30.1 from Beneteau, there the 6 kilowatt pot is really the, the perfect match to have a, a sailing boat uh, equipped with a decent torque because everyone knows this benefits from the, from the electric um, systems that the torque is available. And this is really what you need if you want to take down the sails, if you have, want to have safe docking. Uh, and this is what always provided from, from an electric system. What we now want to do is, as Torquedo, uh, we consider ourselves as a pioneer 70 years ago, starting uh, with the travel as a portable electric outboard. Uh, we create the, the range of products that we consider as the originals. And what we now want to do, and this is an invitation to all boat builders, OEMs, but also to, uh, to you as, as end customers, is to take you on our journey, ask for your contribution, what's important for you. Uh, so I really uh, would be happy to see you at our booth in this hall, uh, just straight over there booth number 22 to interact and also uh, tell us about your concerns uh, in electrification. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Yes. Questions? Are there any questions? Raise your hand. No? No questions? A colleague said uh, electric boating is silent. So. <laughs> <laughs> silent. No question. You answered all of them. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.